What's up, Kerbal Knots? This is Noel on PC, and today we're playing some KSP. And today is a neat, neat little video for you. This is going to be really small, so I apologize. But we are done the Asteroid Museum. Now, I'm sorry that I didn't make videos for each of these, but as you saw in the A class, the little guy there, the little guy was actually the hardest to land, and I think I know why now. So this is one part kind of a showcase video, um, second part kind of a uh, disclaimer, an FYI, if you will, if you're going to do something like this. The landing of the asteroids was a bitch. It was really hard. I found the easiest one was ironically the biggest. Here's why. The mass... I think this. I think the game's broken. If we switch to any one of these, right? So here, here we are. We're at tiny. This is the tiny one, right? Look how small it is. Look how small it is. But if I right-click it, it says it weighs 150 tons. That's either broken or incorrect because as we go down the line, 150 tons. 150 tons. 150 tons. And you guessed it. I can't, what? Oh, because it's because we're on this thing, I think. But this one showed me it. What is going on? Game. Oh, there we go. <laughs> 150 tons. So they all have seemingly the same mass, but they're bigger in drag, right? So the little one, the little guy here, where is he? The little guy only weighs 150 T. 150 T is would be like, like four or five of those orange, those gigantic orange tanks. But so does the big one. So the reason the big one slows down so well is it has the same mass as the little one, but it has like 50 million times the drag. It's got this huge surface area. Now we've noticed that the surface area actually starts just a little bit inside the rock. What I think is that inside there is a universal shape right? All the, all of these asteroids are randomly generated, right? So everyone looks different, right? This dimple won't be on every one of the E-classes. This little nub at the bottom won't be on every E-class. So there's a sphere inside and that sphere inside is what actually has the mass and the drag, right? So that drag coefficient is huge because the thing inside is fucking enormous. But in these little guys, you've got that little tiny sphere and it weighs a shit ton. So they're actually really hard to slow down. So what happened was I ended up doing them in my spare time, right? Like I'd just get really frustrated and I'd stop playing and I'd, you know, a day or two would pass and I'd try it again. And I kept trying and I kept trying and I kept trying. And this took probably, I can't, I can't actually even do the math in my head of how many hours I was putting in to try and get these things down. And once they're here, once they're like, in the general vicinity, you still have to move them over here. <laughs> that was a whole other undertaking, which took big rovers with a booster at the back. And after about the 20th time that I I drove, like one of them was like out here. <laughs> one of the little, I think it was like the B or C class. It was like out here. And to get it back, I used like 20 boosters and it was still like barely here. So I just started cheating. I just started refilling the booster to just sort of hypothetically bring a new one out every time but not have to do the trip. So I did kind of cheat to move them, but without sort of dragging them along with the boosters, it's basically impossible. You can't push them. You can't pick them up and move them. Like, they're, they're 150 tons. Well, I guess you, you, you could. That'd be a neat video, actually. If you guys are really good at KSP, feel free to <laughs> lift like an A-class, you know, like make a little helicopter thing that can literally drone it around. I would be very pleased to see that. So we've got the museum done. I've given you the disclaimer on why you should probably avoid trying to do this unless you've got like 100 hours to waste. If you've got 100 hours of your day to waste, your day, there's 100 hours in a day now. Scientific fact. Don't don't fact check. Don't go to Wikipedia and Google search what a day is. Just take my word for it. 100 hours. Yeah. If you've got 100 hours to waste on this, go for it. If not, just walk away. You don't need this in your life. You really don't. So what I've got here, as you can already tell, is like a lighting rig. Right? I thought at nighttime it would be very cool because I did this in a previous version when I did the uh, asteroid collection back when asteroids were brand new. We did a lighting rig. Let's just reset. So that's default. That is the dark as bullshit default. Okay, that's a little bright. So what we're going to do is we're just going to shimmy. 
We're just going to shimmy this way. <laughs> it's so nimble. It's like adorably nimble. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so these spotlights actually do go a long way. Let's... So I could have like, I could have like one little one out here, which I think it, stop. It's got to be the one that's level, right? Like, uh, yeah, so I think it's that one right there. So about that, yeah, that is level. So I could just do like one light on each asteroid and have them like way out here, seemingly. Like if I just back up a little bit, I'm just going to turn... This one, oh, no, we got a bunch on there. Just gonna point that guy at it. Okay, we're gonna turn light off, light off. Could leave that one on, actually, because that is kind of illuminating them. Okay, that's pretty awesome. I think that works. What I don't like is the big luminescent glow around it, even though it should just be this way. You can see there is a bit of a hue around it, ambient light, if you will. So yeah, this is cool. This is really cool. I love this idea of the lighting rig. I'm going to refine this process where it'll probably just be... Actually, if in a perfect world, it would just be... Oh, let me give you some guys some light. All right, in a perfect world, it would just be the little control brain, a battery, maybe a solar... No, not a solar cell. One of these things. What are these things called? Radio isotope thermoelectric generator like one or two of those a light and a brain that would be it and i'll build them like little drop pods where the truck drives along right like get get the position set up and then it'll like drop off the back i'll stage them almost so i'll be dropping them one at a time right right because as long as this thing as long as the little brain has sas i can sort of twist it and turn it a little bit or i could even put an sas unit on it and then just disable it i think i got this figured out we are going to build a lighting rig that fully lights these things up at night, but it has to be low part count. It can only be like one or two lights total that sort of shine across all four, right? Like we'll put one over here facing inward a little bit so it shines across all four, and then we'll just put one facing the big rock. This is going to be cool, guys. This is going to be cool. All right, guys, I hope, you, I hope you're inspired to maybe try and do asteroid sciences stuff yourself, maybe even land them. I hope you liked this video i'm sure you didn't basically this audio this was an audio test because i keep i keep fighting with the audio setup to try and get it to find a nice happy medium ground but i can't it's very frustrating especially because there's so many facets right i've got obs i've got fraps i've got like a bunch of different games i've got a mic i've got a headset i've got speakers all of these things factor in very unique audio problems like the speaker to headset thing it sounds totally different on my speakers than it does on my headset. I've got a new mic, so I'm fiddling with, you know, how best to set that thing up. I've got a bunch of different recording things. Each one is different. Fraps loves to overpower game sound over your voice, whereas OBS prefers your voice over the game sound. Like, it's just such a bitch. So I'm sorry that, you know, this is going to take a lot of videos to work the bugs out of. But in a, in a couple of weeks, we should have perfect audio. Everyone's going to be happy. In the meantime... I'm sorry, just put up with it. And guys, I hope you like the video. I hope you share. I hope you comment. I hope you do all those things you guys do as YouTubers. Until next time, guys, peace, love, cheers.